Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again today. We're talking about the discus tank, specifically discus tank maintenance. This is actually my favorite kind of video to make. I got a few subscribers have asked me, what do you do for your discus tank maintenance? So I can just show you and I can get a video in because I have to do it anyway. So this is my discus tank. It's a custom built tank. It's five foot by two foot by two foot on a steel frame stand with a sump underneath. When we talk about maintenance, really we're talking about water changes. So there's lots to be said in the discus world about water changes. I'm going to do about a 50% change here, which I do once a week. I used to say twice a week. I got lazy, I'm going to be completely honest. And I've done once a week for months and months and months now. No detrimental effects. I'm not breeding show fish. I'm looking for healthy fish and happy fish. And I think I've got that. I definitely wouldn't advise going any longer than weekly water changes but you will see information out there of people doing daily water changes, 100% water changes every two days, five water changes a week of 25%. I'm not saying they're wrong, I'm just saying I'm not currently doing that. So in terms of water out, I use a hose like this. So this is a fairly standard thing. It's your ribbed hose. It's got a little strainer on the end. Dip that in the tank, take the other end and I throw it out the front door over here. Generally, just before or during the water draining process, I'll go around and I'll use my magnet to get rid of any gunk on the windows. I make sure that that's got the best chance of getting taken out again when we do the, the water removal. Um, when I've done that, on the outside of the glass, I use this stuff. This is the JBL Pro Clean. I just always found it's fairly cheap and fairly good. And my favorite ever tool, the JBL Wish Wash. This is basically just a microfiber cloth. So I'll give this a few sprays on the outside of the glass. I'll go around and rub that down. It just gets rid of any streaks or any marks that we've got on the outside of the aquarium. Keeps everything crystal clear. When the tank is in the drain down position, that's usually the time where I'll go in and have a look at the plants. Any plants need attention, some leaves clipped off or brushing or clearing of algae. Replant some plants because of this body thing down here. My cactus pleco that likes to destroy everything and just generally give a, a tidy up of things so as I don't have to get up to my armpits in water. So for filling water in this little cupboard under my stairs I have my HMA filter and that's hooked up through the floor into the fish room into my thermostatic valve so I get water at the right temperature and I just have a little hose which I can plug into the aquarium and fill it back up again. HMA filters, um, as I've touched on before, it's basically a three-stage filter. It has a, a fine micron filter first to get any debris out of the water, then two carbon filters, a block filter and a granule filter, and that removes any heavy metals. The HMAs come in all kinds of varieties, from larger canisters which handle larger flows or different types of inserts which take out different things. A whole other video all in itself, I'll not go into that here. Basically, it lets me add water without aging it. I can just go straight into the tank without any additives or water conditioners. Next is the stinkiest part of the operation. This is the old filter floss. I've replaced it with new filter floss here, um, nice and bright and white there, compared to the stinky, slimy stuff that I've just taken out. I basically just stuff that in. I don't do this on every water change. It takes a while to build up and get really horrible. And it's not actually filter floss, it's a pillow. Get along to Asda, get the cheapest, non-fragrance, non-medicated, non-anything to pillow and you can just pull out the stuffing for that and it works out much, much cheaper than filter floss. That's what I do, with help from Doggo. And then it's on to refilling, so starting the refilling procedure. Long-time subscribers of the channel will know I love, I love a good flood. So to combat that, we've got this device here, which is a water sensor, open the water meets that little probe in the tank, it sets off an alarm on this thing and that also sends me a text message to say, you're flooding the place. So that's my fail safe, um, gets there, it beeps incessantly and texts me to tell me to come and shut the water off. I'll leave links in the description for all these things that you can go and buy them on affiliate links on Amazon if you like. And then we just wait. It takes a good couple of hours to fill up, this isn't the fastest of flow rates but I kind of manage that because I know how long it's going to take and then come back and switch the pump back on and we're away and we're good to go. 
So I mentioned this video was a subscriber suggestion. If you've got any suggestions for videos you want to see, come and join me on my live stream every Friday at 9 p.m. UK time. And if you can't make that and you don't want to spend all the time watching the replay, I do have a second channel. The link will be in the description with clips from the live stream of all the best bits, the quiz, all that good stuff. So if you want to go and check that out, the link's in the description, as I say. Click that link, subscribe, and get all the best bits on the second channel. So when it's full and as it's filling, I like to spend a little bit of time just checking out all the fish. This is a good time to check for any injuries, check for any signs of ill health. In this tank, for instance, this is a discus tank mainly, but there are other fish in here. I've got discus, I've got angels, I've got congo tetras, elestes tetras, I've got some sterby corridoras, and my infamous cactus pleco, cactus jackass, who likes to dig up all my plants and ruin my nice display. But it's a good chance just to see, make sure everything's healthy, make sure everyone looks good, give them a bit of a feed, make sure everyone's happy, basically. So as well as that general maintenance, I've also got the sump under here. I don't generally do more than just change the filter floss um, every couple of water changes, but every six months, say, um, I'll go in and I'll do a deep clean of the sump and take out all the sponges in the sump and clean everything properly. I do like to get my hands in there just to make sure there's no electrical leaks, things like that. Uh, check all the equipment's working. You don't necessarily need to make any changes or do anything. It's just a, a general once over and a check and make sure everything's going okay. The other thing I like to do, but not now, so not on my water changes, is do water tests. Now you'll get these die-hard aquarists that say, I don't need to do water tests. I just look at my fish and I know what's going on. They're what I call liars. They don't. Um, your water chemistry is something that you don't really notice a change in the fish until it's got to a point where it's quite bad. So I like to keep an eye on what's going on. I'm particularly geeky or nerdy myself. I don't mind doing water changes. I think it's an important part of the hobby and I don't mind doing it. Um, whatever water test you want to use is fine. I'm not going to say the API is better than this or the other. I have used many over the years. I find them all to be useful. It's more about finding one that fits with you. If you don't like the fiddliness, if you're colour blind, you might like some of the dip versions that you can point your camera at, like the JBL Pro Scan. I quite like that one because I can just take a picture of the strip and it'll tell me what my parameters are. I'm not here to sell you on a particular brand. They all have their pros and cons. I think as long as you do tests, it's useful because you can log over time any changes in a parameter up or down over time. Even if it's not quite right, it might not be 10 parts per million of nitrate. It might actually be 15, but if you show 10 consistently, you know that you're keeping things stable. And that's the important part. And the reason I like to do them in the middle of the week rather than near a change is because you might get a bit of a skewed picture, but if you can try and do multiple tests or spread them out, I think you get a better picture of what's going on in your water chemistry. And in terms of the things I'd like to change about this, I'm not overly fond of the fact that I'm throwing all that water, just putting it out to waste. I'd like to recycle it, so I might try and get a system set up where I can move this wastewater down into my fish room sump which then pumps it into some IBCs in my garden and I can use it to water the garden because that's really nitrate rich good water and it should be good for the plants, it should be for growing it. I don't want to just put it straight down the drain, it seems a bit of a waste. So I might look at that. And that's it for my weekly routine. I think that's the main thing is keeping it nice and simple, easy to do because if you create something that's overly complex you'll soon get bored of it and find reasons not to do it. So nice, straightforward, as optimised and as easy to do as possible. And that would be my main tip, is just make it something that's just easy to do so you don't find an excuse. Um, water changes, maintenance, all these things are really important, but if you make it overly complicated, you just won't stick to it. So, hope you found some of that useful. As I said before, you can join me on a Friday night, 9pm UK time, or join my second channel, the Clips channel, all that information will be down below. Any of the tools that I've used here, I'll put links to them down below. There'll be affiliate links, so I might get half a penny if you buy something off them. And other than that, just thanks for staying around. Let me know if you have any suggestions. Let me know what your top tips for your maintenance routines are down in the comments below, or join me on Friday, and we'll talk through them then. See you later. Bye.